Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, one of the things that contributed to the success of the Arduino ecosystem is the fact that there are clone boards that are manufactured uh, and so you don't have to buy it directly from Arduino itself. You can buy a clone. It's compatible because they use the same kind of chips and basically all of the Arduino boards are kind of available as clones in one form or another and often at a much lower price or with greater features. Now the same thing is now happening to the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've got hold of a Raspberry Pi Pico from AliExpress. It was shipped from China to me here, but it's got 16 megabytes of flash. It uses USB-C rather than micro USB. It's got a Neo LED and so on. So what I want to do today is dive in, have a look at this clone of a Raspberry Pi Pico. See, was it working? Is it a true clone? Is it compatible? What features does it offer? And so on. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here is the clone Pico board in all of its glory. Uh, we can see that it's black here to distinguish it from the green ones that are traditional ones from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Before we go into all the details, how did we get here? How is this even possible? If you go to the Raspberry Pi website, you'll actually see there's a section here that's got all of the design files. And these are files for uh, cadence, which of course is for how you make the PCBs, step files for exchanging information about the 3D models and so on. If you look at some of them, here is an example of the 3D model board, shows you all the physical characteristics of what you need to actually make the board. And here is the board inside of the cadence program, which is a PCB design program. And you can dive into all the different layers and how it's all connected together. So if you understand this stuff, if this is what you you do then these files are everything you need to get yourself going on making a clone copy and of course that's what's happened so here on AliExpress you can buy this uh, board from several different vendors uh, and it's a 16 uh, megabyte version with USB-C. I ordered one, only cost $5, which is actually less than what it cost me to buy one a normal Raspberry Pi Pico locally and you get so much more for it. It does take a long time, it took about three, four weeks to get to me, but once it got to me, it was, I was actually really pleasantly surprised. So let's look at the main features. Of course, it's USB-C rather than micro USB, which is good because I've kind of moved over almost to USB-C exclusively now. So being able to do that here is great. You've got 16 megabytes of flash rather than the two megabytes of flash that you would normally get. You've got the same RP2040 uh, dual core Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller. That's the actual one from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, not some kind of clone or something. And they just solder that onto the board that they've designed. And you've still got other features like the serial wire debug you can connect up there. For all those kind of things, see my tutorial video here on how you do that with, um, with Piccolo OS, for example. Other things to note, normally you just get the boot button on the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico, but on this one you actually get a built-in user programmable button so you can look at GPIO 24 to see where that button's been pressed. And there's a built-in reset button, so three buttons in total. I normally wire up a reset button and often a user, um, a user programmable button myself, so uh, in a breadboard, so having these built onto the board is a, is a good uh, advantage. And then we've also got the normal LED on GPIO 25 as you would normally expect the power LED as you pick. There's also a WS2812 Neo Pixel, so red, green, blue Neo Pixel on GPIO 23. And in fact, what I'm going to do is show you the Python code in a demo of how you program that uh, in a moment. And then when you put it all together, you can see that's quite an interesting set of features, much, much more flash, USB-C, extra buttons, extra LEDs, while still maintaining the compatibility because it is that same RP2040 uh, microcontroller uh, chip. So that's absolutely uh, brilliant. And as I said, uh, cost me the same really, or less than what I'd pay for, for one locally. Okay, so let's go on and have a quick demo. Okay, so here we are inside Orthony. I've obviously got the Raspberry Pi Pico clone connected up via USB-C. Now we're gonna get the Neo Pixel to flash going through the different colors that it can do. So first of all, you're gonna need a file called neopixel.py, which you need to download onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. Here is the address of where, from GitHub where I got this copy. I'll also have a copy of it in my GitHub repository for the examples. You need to basically get that code and save it onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. Then you need a main.py, main.python and this is where we can do the actual work notice here there is a from neopixel import neopixel so that's basically the class 
that handles all of that stuff. Just going back to that for a second, it actually does use the PIO state machines for doing that, so that's quite clever. I've got a video here on PIO state machines if you want to watch that. And so basically, we set up the normal LED because we're going to have that flashing as well just for fun. And then here we say pixels is equal to Neo pixels. Now, what are these parameters? The first one is the number of LEDs. In this case, it's just one because there's one on the board. This does work with those strips of LEDs as well. Then we specify which state machine, the PIO state machine. There are hardware PIO state machines and you have to reference them. In this case, we're just gonna start with the first one, that's zero. Pin 23, if you remember from the pinout diagram, I showed you pin 23 was connected to the NeoPixel. And then finally the mode, which is gonna use it in uh, red, green, blue mode, RGB mode. There's a little function here for blinking the normal LED on pin 25. So that just is uh, pretty simple. Now there are two functions here that just to do with color. Basically this first one here takes an input value between zero and 255 and turns it into an RGB color. So you can return here three things RGB. It just cycles through them from red to green to blue and then back again to red. So a very simple way of just getting 256 colors out of the many, many variations, of course, that would be available there. And then this one, uh, rainbow cycle, basically it just says 4J is equal to range 256. That goes from zero through to 255, and then it calls this wheel function with that value, that's the wheel function here, and then we just set the pixel, set the pixel to whatever color that is, and then uh, and then wait, so that's pretty simple. So down at the bottom, what do we do? We kick off the timer for the blinking LED, so that just runs there by timers. We set the brightness to 50, and the reason I do that is actually this uh, LED is really quite bright, and actually I find it quite painful on the eyes if it's at full brightness, so I turn that down a little bit, also helps with the camera. And then very simple, while true, so forever, just keep setting a different color. And that's what it will do. It will just keep setting the different colors forever and ever. For a, quite a simple program, a couple of helper functions here for working out the colors, the NeoPixel class for talking to all the comms, but that's it basically, just set the colors uh, around, 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 around. Okay, let's have a look at it working. Now, just to show that the uh, clone Pico is pinout compatible with a normal Raspberry Pi Pico, I'm connecting up here to the Pico display. I've got a video about this here, which uses a lot of the pins, and of course it just slots in here, and then we're just gonna run a quick demo program showing the balls bouncing around. As you can see, works absolutely normal. So it really does look to be 100% compatible with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay, so there you go. There's my look at the Raspberry Pi Pico clone. Now here's a question for you. Would you buy one of those or would you still buy an original directly from the Raspberry Pi Foundation? Please do let me know in the comments below. Okay, if you like this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like these kinds of videos, please consider sticking around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.